Hello everyone, welcome to Control Engineering and Control Theory Tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of control engineering, control theory, signal processing, optimization, machine learning, etc. In this particular video tutorial we will demonstrate how to define and perform basic calculations on state space models in Python control systems library. This is actually the second tutorial about Python control systems library. In my first tutorial, whose link can be found in the description below this video, I introduced the Python control systems library. Briefly speaking, this is an amazing library that can be a good alternative to MATLAB control systems toolbox. You can perform linear input output system analysis, nonlinear analysis, linearization, you can add blocks of different systems, connect them together, compute time response, etc. Before I start, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this video tutorial. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start with system modeling. The first step is to import the necessary libraries, functions and tools. First, we import the plotting library, then we import the control systems library as CT. Note over here that it's a standard convention to import the control systems library as CT. This is recommended by the creators of this library. And finally, we import the NumPy library as NP. Over here, I will create a function that will be used for plotting different graphs and responses in this tutorial. Here is the function. This function accepts several arguments. The first argument is x-axis vector. The second argument is the y-axis vector. The third argument is the title of the plot. The fourth argument is the label on the x-axis. The fifth argument is the label on the y-axis. And finally, the last argument is the name of the file that will be used to save the plotted graph. Basically, this function will be used to plot the step response of the defined system. One of the most simplest models of a dynamical system is a linear time invariant state space model. This model has the following form. x dot is equal to ax plus bu this is the state equation, and the output equation is y is equal to cx plus du. Over here, x is the state vector, where n is the dimension of our state space, a, b, c, and d are matrices of appropriate dimensions, u is the control input, and y is the observed output. We assume that y can be directly measured or observed. Let's create a state space model. First, we need to define the system matrices. Here is the system matrix A, system matrix B, system matrix C, and system matrix D. Note that system matrices are defined as array. Let's see these system matrices. Here's my matrix A, here's B, C, and D. Note over here that I assume that the dimension of the state space model is equal to 2. The next step is to define the state space model. We use this function SS and we specify the matrices as input arguments. Let's see our state space model. To see the state space model, I actually need to print the state space model. And here it is. It's saying that it's a linear system. There's one input, there is one output, there are two states, and here are the state space matrices. In my first video tutorial on control systems library, I explained how to define transfer functions. However, we can also convert state space models to transfer functions. We can do that by using this function, 
SS to TF. As an input argument, we need to provide the name of, the, of our state space model. Let's see the result. Here's the result. This transfer function corresponds to the state space model. We can go other way around, that is, we can convert a transfer function to the state space model. We can do that by calling this function tf to ss. Let's do that. And let's print the converted state space model. So here is the converted state space model. And let's compare this state space model with the original state space model. Let's expand this and let's just compare the A matrices. Aha, uh -huh. we can see something strange over here. We can see that A over here from the model that's being directly converted from the transfer function is different from the A of our original system. We can see that B is different, C is different, and D is equal. However, these two systems are actually equivalent since it's a very well-known fact in control theory that there is a similarity transformation or state space matrix conversion that transforms one system to another. However, the eigenvalues and the dynamical characteristics, that is, dynamical properties of two systems, are being preserved. So if we take the original system and we compute the step response of such a system and if you compute the step response of the system that's being converted from the transfer function, we will observe that these two step responses are actually equal. Next, let's explain how to compute the step response of the system and let's perform some basic calculations. To compute the step response of the system, we first need to define a time vector. The elements of this time vector start in 0 and end at 5, and we have 100 equally spaced entries. To simulate the step response, we use this function. We specify our state space model and we specify the time vector. This function returns the time used for simulation and it also returns the simulated response. So let's compute the step response. Here's the return time. This return time should correspond to the time vector and here's our system output. The next step is to plot the computed step response. For that purpose I'm using this function that's given at the beginning of this video tutorial. Don't worry if you cannot type this function in your Python editor I will post all the codes used in, used in this video tutorial on my GitHub page. Let's plot the step response. Here it is. It's a beautiful step response. The system is asymptotically stable. And one thing to observe over here is that we have a steady state gain that's not equal to 1. And consequently, we will have some offset with respect to one point. Next, let us obtain some basic information about the step response. For that purpose, we can use this function step info. Let's run this function and let's see the output. The output is dictionary with typical step response characteristics. We can see the rise time, settling time, we can see the overshoot, undershoot, peak, peak time, etc. We can also see this important parameter, that is, we can see the steady state value. Next, let us compute the natural frequencies, damping ratio, and poles of the system. To do that, we will use this function. Here is the output. We can see two eigenvalues. These are the poles of the system. We can see damping corresponding to these eigenvalues, and we can see frequency. Very good. So this system is not very well damped, and we can see that the natural frequency is equal to 2. Next, let's compute the poles. For that purpose, we will use this function. And let's see the poles of the system. As expected, the poles of the system 
correspond to eigenvalues of the system. Let's compute zeros of the system. We don't have a zero since the transfer function is 1 over something. Let's see the pole zero map. This is also a very useful plot. Here are poles. They are lightly damped. And finally, we can use this simple tool called CISO tool to plot some detailed characteristics of the system. This plot CISO tool is similar to the MATLAB CISO collection of plots. Let's see what happens. As the result, we obtain this graph showing body plot, body phase, root locus, and step response. Next, let's learn how to discretize our state space model. The first step is to define the discretization time. There are two methods for discretization of dynamical systems that are implemented in control systems library. The first method is zero order hold method and the second method is bilinear method. To discretize the state space model we use this func function sample system. We specify our state space model, we specify the sample time, we specify the method. Let's execute this and let's see the result. We need to actually print the system, don't forget to do that. And let's see what's happening. Okay, so this is our discrete, discrete time system, and let's compare these matrices with the original system matrices. We can clearly see that the matrices are different. This is because the new system is in discrete time. And notice over here that discrete time system description also contains the discretization time. Next, let us compute the step response of the discretized system. To do that, we first need to define the time vector. And notice over here that the distance between the time vector points should correspond to the discretization time, otherwise you will get an error. That's why I'm using this part over here. I'm using the floor function to obtain the exact discretization spacing. To compute the step response, we use the function step response and let's see the result. However, I probably need to execute everything from here. Of course, nothing is being plotted. To plot the result, I'm using my plotting function. And here is the result. Okay, this will be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.